Hello, good people. What's going on? How you doing? My name is Dr. Sami Bayer. I'm a psychologist and I'm an author. Please welcome back to my channel. When you abandon the narcissist, when you discard the narcissist, what happens when you dump the narcissist? That is the title of today's episode. When you kick a narcissist to the curb, it can be an amazing feeling. Escaping their toxic grasp and control can bring unspeakable relief. But what about this narcissist? How do they deal with being discarded? How do they, does the narcissist deal with being dumped? How does the narcissist deal with being abandoned? Should we care? Well, it all depends. It depends on how much you have suffered or lost at the hands of the narcissist. There are different levels of narcissism. It's a fact that some narcissists cause more damage than others. Although narcissists are inherently evil due to their spiritual possession, some narcissists are more aware or in control than others. I strongly believe that narcissists get progressively worse based on not just age, but the experiences. Narcissists get hurt too, and every time the narcissist gets hurt, they strengthen their defense mechanisms. They become colder and darker. The spiritual entity strengthens its hold and the narcissist becomes more dangerous. When a narcissist is abandoned, this reopens a very deep and hurtful wound. The ego is not just bruised. It has been trampled and the narcissist is left gasping for air. The narcissist is first left unfounded by it all, somewhat in shock as they didn't expect it. They explore all the whys, whos and whats. In their deluded minds, the narcissist doesn't understand how you can leave someone so perfect as him. The narcissist is perfect in his own eyes. So how could you think that you could live without them? How could you live without the narcissist? The narcissist convinces themselves that you will be nothing without them. They'll even tell you, you will be nothing without me. That you have made the biggest mistake of your life. But in all honesty, it has made the narcissist feel like scum and they mull over it for some time. All the while, the entity is filling their minds with not only thoughts of worthlessness, but revenge. The demonic entity that the narcissist hosts loves it when the narcissist is hurt because it is allowed to feed and strengthen itself off the pain and brokenness of the narcissist. When a narcissist reemerges from this terrible downtime without proper treatment, they are more dangerous than before. They will employ flying monkeys to find out about you. They will become obsessed with you. The narcissist will want revenge. The narcissist will be smearing your name, pretending to move on and hunting for the next victim all at the same time. As they are hunting for the next victim, they are also smearing your name. The narcissist is on the prowl for a new supply, who will probably end up paying for what you did. So, what actually happens when you abandon a narcissist? People who have been in relationships with narcissists know how emotionally draining this can be. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist, there will be times when you will be actually happy and content in the relationship but most of the time in a relationship with a narcissist you'll be insulted denigrated emotionally tortured and made to feel like nothing worthless useless piece of garbage this might sound horrible and harsh but this is the absolute truth of being with a narcissist so if you truly value your sanity you will have to understand that the narcissist is an emotional vampire you will never have any real value except as feeding ground for his voracious appetite of self. Everything must revolve around this self-styled God. God with a small g. Separate yourself from his kingdom of self if you want any identity of your own. Now, let me ask you, are you planning to abandon a narcissist? Are you planning to abandon a narcissist? If you plan to abandon the narcissist in your life, you should know first that you are most certainly not alone. Unfortunately, the unfortunate truth is that thousands of men and women experience emotional and psychological abuse at the hands of a malignant narcissist. 
Well, this is terrible news for humanity. It's good news for you today because research and experience allows you a glimpse into the psychology of the narcissist. It's a painful realization to reach that point of giving up, but this is what is necessary if things aren't going to change. This is when you have the greatest risk of narcissist retaliation. If the narcissist thinks you're planning on leaving them. So once you decide that it's time, the final stage of implementing this can take place. Deciding to abandon a narcissist is scary, especially since a part of you misses the person you signed up for and how they used to be so kind and caring before everything changed. So discovering that you're dealing with a narcissist, maybe there was a specific incident or several incidences that you feel caused the narcissist to become disillusioned with you. And so you spent months or years trying to make up for whatever damage the narcissist claimed you caused. Maybe you discover that you're dealing with a narcissist through, you found yourself maybe googling about how you could become more like what the narcissist in your life really seemed to want, right? But then you ran across something that blew your mind. You found out about narcissism, or more specifically narcissistic personality disorder, or narcissistic relationships. So as you read through a checklist, or article, or, or the article you found on the, when, uh, on the, on the, on the website, or when you watch the video on narcissism, perhaps my videos, a light bulb went on, on in your head. Your brain almost hurt from the heavy realization you had at that moment. After all the months or years you've been blaming yourself, it turned out that it wasn't you after all who had a problem. You suddenly understood that this person, your partner, matched up the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. And that even if they weren't diagnosed, they clearly demonstrated the trademark behaviors of a narcissist. You didn't know if you were happy or super angry that you'd been unfairly beating yourself up for all this time. You weren't sure whether to be upset that you had bent over backward to prove yourself to someone who will never see you. You struggled with the idea that you wasted so much of your life trying to make the narcissist happy. When it will turn out that even if you are literally perfect, the narcissist will never be satisfied. In other words, you recognize that this person who you, know, you now know as the narcissist in your life has actually done nothing but abuse and devalue you as they see fit and at any given moment for almost as long as you can remember. Are you worried you might be wrong and this person isn't a narcissist? If so, rewatch my videos on how to spot a narcissist so making the decision to leave the narcissist maybe you thought something was wrong with you at first you couldn't understand how someone could treat you the way this person did so you assumed you must be the problem maybe you thought that if only you could somehow fix whatever the narcissist claimed was wrong with you and things would finally change but now you're over it and you want out you want to abandon the narcissist. You want to discard the narcissist. You want to damn the narcissist. You crave and deserve freedom. And you, have the, uh, and you have taken that time to create your escape plan to go no contact or low contact. You would love to abandon the narcissist completely. But you want to know what to expect. And if you are honest, you are understandably concerned about what consequences you could face if you take off and leave the narcissist. Why is it so difficult to abandon the narcissist? Let's face it. The reasons you might be hesitant to leave the narcissist are many. Not only are you highly likely to be trauma bonded to the narcissist, thanks to years or even decades of abuse, but you might be dealing with a fear of abandonment and some attachment issues of your own. And quite honestly, you are at least a little bit afraid of the narcissist. You have seen the narcissist fly into an un unreasonable narcissistic rage for the smallest of reasons. And any time the rage didn't give them the results they wanted, you've witnessed them using narcissistic injury, also known as the poor me act, as a way to manipulate you into doing what they want. Unfortunately, this has been a problem in your life more often than you, are, than you care to admit. But now that you're finally done and you're ready to get the heck out of Dodge, you're fully expecting all hell to break loose. 
You know that it won't go easily. And you suspect that the narcissist will do anything literally in their power to stop you. Especially because you, you leaving the narcissist means them losing the one thing they cannot do without. And that is narcissistic supply. And if you are like most survivors, you're worried about what they will do if you leave. So, what can you expect when you're banned on the narcissist? The early part of the no contact journey is no picnic. So, when you're banned on the narcissist, you can expect to deal with various manipulation tactics. When you're banned on the narcissist, when you discard the narcissist, when you damn the narcissist, what happens? This is what happens when you abandon the narcissist. Number one, the narcissist will, the narcissist will beg you to stay. The narcissist might beg you to stay or even try to talk you out of living. You may even hear things like, you will never find anyone who loves you as much as I do. Or you're going to regret this in the long run. But then they will start love bombing you again and suddenly become the perfect partner. And they'll seem, to, they'll seem so sincere. Naturally, you will want to believe them. And you will find it nearly impossible to live if you indulge in this little fantasy at all. Just remember that once they've got you firmly back in their grip, they'll quickly return to their old ways. When you abandon the narcissist, the narcissist will guilt trip you. The narcissist will try to make you feel guilty for abandoning them. Then they will suddenly forget that they ever treated you anything but like royalty. In general, narcissists are incapable of taking responsibility for their actions. And the narcissistic guilt trip takes things to a whole new level. Not only is the narcissist well aware of your buttons, which they will happily push at any given moment to get what they want, but the narcissist has literally no limits to the levels to which they will stoop. When you abandon the narcissist, the narcissist will threaten you. In many cases, the narcissist will at least threaten to stoop at any level to get revenge. You may even hear things like, if you leave, I'll tell everyone what a bad person you are. Or if you walk out of that door, don't ever expect me to let you back in. Remember that even if you choose to stay with a narcissist, they'll start a smear campaign about you if they haven't already done that. So don't try to reason with the narcissist and don't make excuses. If you are afraid the narcissist will physically hurt you or your kids, be really intentional in your planning and do your best to avoid confrontation as you exit. If possible, leave and don't say anything to the narcissist until you are safely away. When you leave the narcissist, when you abandon the narcissist, when you discard the narcissist, when you dump the narcissist, the number four thing that should, will happen, the narcissist will stalk and harass you. Expect to, expect to be stalked and harassed by the narcissist after you abandon them, especially if they have no other sources of narcissistic supply. If they have other sources of supply, they may still stalk you, but it might be less intense or not at all, depending on the situation. Still, it's important to remember that for the narcissist, this supply can literally feel like a requirement for them, like air or water. So, whether it's immediately or later down the line, you should be aware that abandoning a narcissist can lead to stalking. So, if you are concerned about an existing stalker, or you already know that the narcissist in your own life will become a stalker, so you can take precautions and keep yourself safe. When you discard a narcissist, when you abandon a narcissist, the narcissist will hover you. If the narcissist in your life is not already engaging with a replacement for you, then you can expect to be hoovered. N uh, hooved, hoovering here, yeah. hoover, hoover, hoovering, hoover, hoovering term used by the narcissist, uh, uh, hoovering as a narcissistic language term, was named after the famous vacuum cleaner company, hoovering. Happens when the narcissist tries to suck you back in after they discard so this can be drama related or an attempt to reconcile the relationship or in some cases an attempt to get you break no contact once you do get away. So you can expect the narcissist to hoover since you are one of their primary sources of narcissistic supply. And sometimes the only one 
So when you unexpectedly cut off that source of supply, the narcissist will be like a vampire who goes without blood for too long. They'll do anything to get a little taste of it. If they are in need anyway, they will send you texts such as, can we please talk? Or I miss you, please come back. Now listen. This next part is hard and will take a ton of willpower, but you've got to hold your ground here. Do this when the narcissist tries to hoover you. Don't answer their texts. Please don't respond to their repeated efforts to contact you on social media. Block them on their usual, block the narcissist and their flying monkeys, their usual flying monkeys. And if they show up at your door, you don't answer it. If they won't leave and they're causing a scene, call the police and have them removed. And speaking of flying monkeys, this brings me to the next point. Number six thing that happens when you abandon a narcissist. The narcissist will engage their flying monkeys in triangulation. Here is where the narcissist will employ these so-called flying monkeys. Flying monkeys are just people who willingly or otherwise do the narcissist's bidding and support the narcissist's agenda. In other words, the flying monkeys, they enable the narcissist's games and manipulations. Whether they do it willingly or the narcissist manipulates them into helping. So if the hoover doesn't work, and sometimes even before they try the hoover, the narcissist, narcissist will pull out the triangulation card. Triangulation is, unfortunately, a prevalent manipulation tactic, often employed by narcissists. This is when the narcissist communicates as a third party between two people, but prevents the two from communicating directly through either manipulating or controlling at least one of them. So in this case, because the narcissist may be desperate to get in touch with you for a bit of supply, or to cause you more stress and pain, which, if we are honest, is also supply, they're going to start reaching out to people who will help them by telling you how worried the narcissist is or how sad the narcissist seems since you left them or whatever. So when you abandon the narcissist, the seventh thing that will happen, the narcissist will flaunt their new source of supply in your face. Alternatively, the narcissist may quickly scoop up a new person to be their source of narcissistic supply. And once they've got that poor and suspecting soul in place, you know what they'll do, right? They will try to use this to hurt you. So they will try to contact you, to fill you in on their good fortune. The narcissist will want you to know how much better they get along with the new supply and how that person gets them in ways you never could. Of course, they'll take all the supply they can get, right? So you know they'll be posting all over their social accounts, telling the world about this new and amazing person they've finally found. They'll proclaim that this person is their new soulmate and even insult you indirectly in the process by either, no, by either not acknowledging that you ever existed or by directly pointing out how much better they are with the new person. They will conveniently forget how a similar thing happened when they met you, that they once thought you were the amazing soulmate who could do no, do no wrong and who just got them in ways the ex, their ex never could. It's a typical narcissistic supply of abuse. It's a typical narcissistic cycle of abuse. So, they will try to call you or send you messages to brag about them, hoping that they will get a rise out of you. Of course, the best thing to do is to ignore the messages and block their number and social media profiles. If you get any strange friend requests or follows from new accounts that look suspicious, then you will want to block those as well. The number eight thing that happens when you discard, when you abandon the narcissist, the narcissist will run smear campaigns. Remember how I mentioned smear campaigns before in this video? Well, not only is the narcissist worried that you will expose who they are, but they are also going to need a replacement supply. And they will need that very fast. So they are going to tell everyone a big sob story. And they are going to try to tell everyone what a terrible person you are. They will attempt to ruin your reputation among your family and friends. And if possible, they'll even try to get you fired from a job. The narcissist can also threaten you by leaking your personal and private information in public. So be careful to avoid engaging with their rumors and lies. Instead, of, instead if someone you feel deserves an explanation asks you, then you can explain yourself just one time. So if the person appears not to believe you or continues to act as a flying monkey, on the narcissist's behalf, you can step away emotionally until you're feeling more healed 
And at that time, you can decide whether you'd like to keep that person in your life. Now, the other question, should you abandon the narcissist? Given all of the information that I've shared here in this video, you might feel a little doubtful about your decision to leave the narcissist. Worse, you might find that things are still not resolved and more damage is done by separating from the narcissist. But while it won't necessarily be easy, it will certainly be worth your time and trouble. And now that you know what to expect when you abandon a narcissist, you can be prepared and protect yourself along the way. So moving on, to preserve one's mental health, one must abandon the narcissist. One move, must move on. Moving on is a process, not a decision or an event. First, we have to acknowledge and accept reality. When you finally abandon a narcissist, it is a volcanic, shattering, agonizing series of little, nibbling thoughts and strong, voluptuous resistances. The battle won, harsh and painful realities assimilated. We can move on to the learning phase. We label, we assemble the material, we gather knowledge, we compare our experiences, we digest, we have insights. Then we, des we decide and we act. This is to move on. So, having gathered sufficient emotional sustenance, support and confidence, we live to face the battlefields of our relationships, fortified and nurtured. This stage characterizes those who do not moan but fight, they do not grieve but replenish their self-esteem, they do not hide but seek do not freeze but move on. So grieving, after we abandon a narcissist, after being betrayed and abused, we grieve. We grieve for the image we had of the, of the traitor and abuser. The image that was so fleeting and so wrong. We mourn the damage the narcissist did to us. We experience the fear of never being able to love or to trust again. And we grieve this loss. In one stroke, we lost someone we trusted and even loved. We lost our trusting and loving selves, and we lost the trust and love that we felt. Can anything be worse? The emotional process of grieving is multifaced. At first, we are dumbfounded, shocked, inert, immobile. We play dead to avoid our inner monsters. We are ossified in our pain, cast in the mold of our reticence and fears. Then we feel enraged. Indignant, rebellious, and hateful. Then we accept, then we cry, and then some of us learn to forgive and to pity, but never return to a demeaning monster. And this is called healing. So all the feelings that you feel when you abandon a narcissist, each and every stage is absolutely necessary and good. It is bad not to, re to rage back. It is bad not to shame those who shamed us. It is bad not to deny or to pretend to evade. But it is equally as bad to stay like this forever. Permanent grieving is the perpetuation of our abuse by other means. So by endlessly recreating our harrowing experiences, we unwillingly and defiantly collaborate with our abuser, that is the narcissist, to perpetuate his or her evil deeds. It is by moving on that we defeat our Abuser, it is by moving on that we defeat that narcissist, minimizing him and his importance in our lives. It is by loving and by trusting anew that we annul that which was done to us. So to forgive is never to forget. But to remember is not necessarily to relieve. So what is my parting shot here? I want to bring this out because people are advising to just run or ghost the narcissist. But this, is, this has a very negative effect on the narcissist and makes the narcissist more dangerous for the next innocent victim. I would advise you today to leave a letter or send a text explaining why you are leaving the narcissist and making it clear that you know that they are a narcissist and that they need help. So, yes, pack your bags and prepare to go no contact, but at least leave a message or not to explain why. Yes, the narcissist will use it against you somehow. And it will still hurt them, but you've given them something to work with. You've given the narcissist something to pick apart and project back onto you, even though you won't be around to hear it. Instead of their minds going into a hundred directions trying to figure out what happened. So we already know that they overthink obsessively. So just ghosting them can drive them insane. 
Some narcissists may even consider what you've said and attempt to get help. You never know. I know for some people they would love the narcissist to suffer because of what they've put them through and the time they've taken from them. But I'm saying spare a thought for the next person who will cross the narcissist. The entity wants the narcissist to get hurt. The entity wants everyone to abandon the narcissist because then it knows that it will be strengthened off the heart and pain of the narcissist. The entity wants full control of the narcissist and every time a narcissist is abandoned,